that this is Brockton. It's been a busy 30 days in Brockton. At PCA, we've been really busy with uh, sports coverage on our educational channel and all kinds of government meetings on our uh, government channel and also bleeding over into our public channel where we've produced a program called Candidates Forum with BCA and the Enterprise hosted by Ed Miller and Larry Curtis. It's been a very busy 30 days. What else has been happening for the last 30 days? Yeah. Well, the last 30 days has been Hispanic Heritage Month. Now here's Elsa Suxo wrapping it up with an interview. Soraya Presume Calixt. Other people call me Dr. Soraya because of my background and clinical um, counseling as well as um, parent engagement or education. Oh, I know that I have a message to share for others to understand that whatever it is that they're going through, they're not alone. And as I'm working as a specialist for parent engagement for the Brockton Public Schools, I hope that whenever someone sees me, they don't only see themselves, but they see the opportunity there is out there. And hopefully I'll be able to guide them to wherever they want to go and to achieve their dreams. Working for the Brockton Public Schools, I prefer that people have a name, Soraya, a phone number, 774-517-7081. People can either text me, call me, WhatsApp message me, whatever it is that works for you, or email. It's a full name that I have, Soraya F. Presume at bpsma.org. And I think that when someone can relate and talk to you, either you speak Haitian Creole, French, um, Spanish, Portuguese, or other languages, I may not know that language, but I make sure that you find someone who speaks your language and can hear where you're coming from and guide you, as I mentioned, to whatever you want to, to be. The month of October, it's full of celebration. We have uh, breast cancer, um, we have other stuff. But one thing that I would like to highlight, especially for Parents Academy, it's Spanish Hispanic Heritage Month, where we are highlighting authors, uh, inventors, those who made an impact. And the reason that I would like to do that, I want you coming from different countries in South America or in Colombia, Puerto Rico, um, Dominican Republic, wherever you may come from, that you feel that you are home and we are celebrating you. And especially helping our children to understand that, yes, they are worth so much and they can do anything that they put their mind into. Celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. Celebrar el mes de la gerencia hispania. We're going to do this at the George School, 180 Colonel Bell Drive. It will be at 6 o'clock. Please join us and learn about your culture. Read with your children. You have so much to offer. See you soon. Hey, thanks, Elsa. That was a wonderful story. Now, Ingrid Isaac has been out following what's going on with the homeless situation in Brockton and she filed this report. This housing project was always about saving lives. During the pandemic, we moved here in order to socially distance our shelter guests. We saw our COVID infection rate drop from 20% to less than 1% when we socially distanced from Mainspring shelter to the roadway. Together, Together, we are taking a depopulation site, a temporary shelter, and not leaving it, not closing it, but we are converting it to housing for our most vulnerable neighbors in record time. All of us here, the funders, the partners, with laser focus, created housing in one year. Siting, local approvals, support, funding, lending, all lined up because we were all on the line to get something done because of this pandemic. Usually a complicated affordable housing project like this one takes three to four years in our world. This administration, thank you to Governor Baker, the Lieutenant Governor and Secretary Keneally last year, made funding available to convert underutilized properties and hotels during the pandemic to housing for people experiencing homelessness. 
with the support of the mayor and ward councilor Aniri, we knew we had the political will to do this right here in Brockton at this location. From there, you make two calls. You call Kate Racer from DHCD about potential funding, and you call Roger Herzog from CDAC for a really large loan. <laughs> Thank you, Kate and Undersecretary Maddox, because I know I bothered Kate a lot over the last year on this project, but I think I only bothered Jennifer once for a few vouchers, maybe? <laughs> From that support we had, the ball then started to roll down the hill. And even when we faced major hurdles and speed bumps and hiccups, we together, all of us, but all 28 plus people on state closing calls every week for six months, together, all of those people together knew what was at stake and we crushed the speed bumps. The roadway apartment project shows that when we have the political will and the dedicated funding, we can end homelessness very quickly. 69 units of housing, if we look at the point of time of homelessness today for individuals in the city of Brockton, we just reduced it by 50%. Hi, I'm April Connolly. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Father Bills in Mainspring. So the best uh, way to access any services that we offer is to, um, to call us. Um, right now we're um, still operating with a, a cap on our emergency shelter services and so you can call 508-427-6448 um, and they'll direct you to access um, any of the resources that you might need. When will this new building open? So the roadway uh, in which is going to be the roadway apartments uh, and it, we're in the process of an occupied rehab so we're converting um, the 69 former hotel rooms to permanent supported housing um, and we're doing that while it's occupied so right now the building is open and we're operating it um, and we're our first 12 units will come online um, in November for leasing permanent residents and then um, we'll phase over the course of several months um, additional units and expect to be complete by spring of 2022 so we'll be fully occupied by late spring okay do you have any similar projects coming down the pipeline? Well, we're currently um, in uh, development in Quincy to develop uh, 30 units of permanent supported housing as well as um, a new housing resource center, uh, which will replace our current emergency shelter in Quincy. And we're hoping to do the same here in Brockton. So our hope is to um, develop a site that we're acquiring from the federal government and um, convert our current mainspring shelter uh, to open a housing resource center and 32 units of permanent housing um, right here in Brockton. And why this location? So this um, opportunity presented itself in the middle of the pandemic. We needed uh, to depopulate our overcrowded emergency shelters for individuals and um, the Roadway Inn was a distressed, underutilized uh, hotel. So we uh, started renting it with the emergency management funds through the state of Massachusetts and um, basically cut our uh, census at Mainspring House in half and 69 people came here to stay on a shelter um, as a shelter. So we've been operating it as an emergency shelter. Um, and then the Commonwealth of Massachusetts made housing funds available um, and we had this project that we thought it would be a perfect retrofit to make into permanent housing um, because a hotel room um, very much looks like a studio efficiency and all we had to do was add a kitchenette um, and update some of the systems and you have a, a permanent housing unit for um, a development cost that is um, way less expensive than if you were to build from, from the, the ground, ground up. How does it feel to be eventually moving into somewhere permanent after being in a housing shelter? Good. 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 Excited? Yeah. We're looking so, forward to that. Yeah, yeah, looking very forward to that. In the rooms, and so instead of going way back to the kitchen, I will have my own kitchen in the room. We gotta do my own food. Okay. I, I love cooking, so 
I want to do African food. That's what I do. I'm an African. So I want to do African food, you know? Get them something different. Okay? I'm willing to get them anything different because I love to cook. <laughs> That's my hobby. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you, Charles. Okay. Thank you, Charles. You know, Ingrid has uh, done her third story now. She just started volunteering. Um, it's only been a month. It's, yeah. She's a month in, and she's starting to actually get what video production is really about. She's really fantastic. And Absolutely. Ingrid... Ingrid came in the first time and she said, I want to start doing everything. You know, she's really been a breath of fresh air and capitalizing on this opportunity that people have in Brockton mm -hmm. to come in and use this space, utilize our equipment, utilize our staff and actually learn how to develop their voice in the community. You know, Cassie, how does someone become a member? Well, thanks, Carl. Um, someone can become a member just by coming in to BCA. We have applications at the front desk. You sign up and boom, like that, you're a member. Or you can go to bcatv.org and sign up there. Yes, next, we have Isaac covering the cultural affairs meeting happening in Brockton. Let's take a look to see what's happening next month. Well, hey, welcome to our cultural affairs and tourism meeting, our ad hoc committee where anybody can be a part of it. And uh, that's one of the beautiful things about it. It's, uh, we, you, you don't have to be an elected official. You don't have to be anybody special. We just, uh, anybody can come and get some opportunity to present. And, you know, our goal is very straightforward. We want to promote Brockton. It's as simple as that. We want Brockton to be an exciting place. We want it to be a safe place. Um, so we do have the printed agendas tonight, so we will stick to it as close as we possibly can. Um, although I guess next time I'm going to make sure that we do things in chronological order uh, because that could be a lot of jumping up and down for people uh, where they have different things to talk about. Uh, but also, too, we just want to make sure, you know, in this day and age of the, some people are calling it post-COVID, some are calling it, we haven't a clue what it is. All right. Our facility is a facility where masks are not mandated. They're not required. Uh, if you've been vaccinated or unvaccinated, it's optional for you. Um, so... We have people come to the services where they wear the mask the whole time and nobody says anything to them. We have people that don't wear a mask at all. Uh, although we have required that they wear one, have it with them to wear if they happen to be walking around the building, you know, just on, for safety's sake. So anyway, that's, uh, you know, one of the nice things about being in a church facility. The rules are slightly different, but everybody should be caring for one another. And that's important. So, in this, uh, Thomas and I already talked about it. You know, we're pointing out that this type of microphone is the kite that you really got to stick your face in it. Please don't stick your face in the microphone. You know, the distance, it will work. Um, you know, we don't want to spread anything, you know, that way. So, um, so, we're glad you're here. I know we might have a few more people come in, but I guess um, we have Mary's going to come and talk about something that's very exciting that has been missed in the city of Brockton. From everyone, at, from everyone at BCA, I'm Carl Pride. And I'm Cassie Burney. Have a great week.